Hi, my name is Jason Milligan, a research technician with the United States Bowling Congress, and I'm going to take you through the steps of a standard ball approval. First step of the approval process, once the ball comes out of the box, we need to get the gross weight. What we're doing here is lining up the bowling ball inside the coffin scale. With this scale, we're going to be able to, we to measure one side of the ball against the other. Once the scale is balanced with the center of gravity on one side of the scale, we'll turn the ball over and measure for total top weight. After getting the top weight, move the ball over to the ground scale, around this gauge, and we're going to first check for the ball's actual diameter using just a standard caliper. What we're going to do next is run the ball under the roundness gauge. This ball is going to be set under this caliper and it will be rotated all the way around. What we're checking for here is the difference in roundness or total run out. After we're all set getting the total out of round or total run out for the ball, we're going to go into the durometer which is going to let us know the hardness of the ball. Here we will take 10 readings and get an average of the 10. The next step in the process, we're going to test for radius of gyration. It gives us an idea of the size and strength of the core inside the ball. Uh, if you think of the bowling ball as a car, it would be the strength of the engine, size of the engine. Before we do that, the first thing we need to find is the ball's true high RG and low RG axis point. Using a determinator, we're going to energize the ball, let the ball rotate around its axis until it finds its true high RG axis point. in the true actual high RG axis. Now with the ball's true high RG axis mark, or the Y axis, we can find the ball's true low RG axis, or the true pin. The line is drawn six and three quarters from the high RG axis toward the pin. Giving us our true pin. Now that we have our high and our low RGs found, we need to locate our intermediate axis, which is going to be six and three quarters from the high RG axis. Now that we found our true pin, or our low RG, our high RG, and our intermediate RG, we can now put the ball on an RG swing and test the true RG of the core. All three axes will be swung for 11 oscillations uh, twice, and we can get an average from those two runs per axis. This is going to give us a time, which will equate into a number for the actual number for radius of gyration, a lower number being a ball that wants to roll sooner, a higher number being a ball that wants to roll later. With the numbers for our low RG axis, we would now turn the ball and get the numbers for the high RG axis. Once we determine the RG in inches between the low and the high RG axes, we can then determine the ball's total differential, which gives us an idea of the ball's flares potential and its overall potential. Now with the low and the high RG axis determined, we're going to go ahead and test the Z, which is the intermediate. In a symmetrical ball, it's going to be very similar to the high RG axis. It should be identical. 
and an asymmetrical ball, it's going to be somewhere in between the low and the high. With the RGs determined, we're now going to take the ball to the ball spinner and test the strength of the particles through the most hardness testing. With the most hardness test, a piece of glass is run over top of the cover stock while it's in motion. If the particles are hard enough to scratch the glass, then the ball fails. We're good there. Next, we're going to test the transfer of energy between the bowling ball and a bowling pin on a COR ramp. What we're testing here is coefficient of restitution. Three, two, one. There are four infrared sensors placed inside this box. They're reading the ball's in initial velocity, the pin's initial velocity, which is zero, the ball's velocity after impact, and the pin's velocity after impact. With those factors, we can determine the ball and pin interaction and the actual coefficient of restitution of the ball. Our next test is going to be the interaction between the ball's cover stock and a dry lane panel. This is our coefficient of friction test. The ball is placed into a ball sled and secured. The sled is then pulled across a dry lane panel. Use a tension gauge to determine the ball's COF. Once the test has been run eight times, it gives us a rough idea of how much friction there is between the ball's cover stock and the dry lane panel itself. Once we're done with the COF testing, we now are going to prep the ball for surface roughness testing. We use the surface factory from Storm to sand the ball to a fresh 500 grit Avalon pad finish. Once the ball has been removed from the surface factory, it's been run on the 500 grit Avalon pad and is now ready for surface roughness testing. We use a standard MyTutorial profilometer. This is an SJ301. And this device is similar to a large record player needle. What it's going to do is it's going to run a diamond tip needle across the cover stock. It's going to read the peaks and valleys of the cover stock itself. Off of that reading, this shows the surface roughness, the RA value at 35.8 micro inches. We would standard do 50 spots on this ball and get the average of that as long as it falls within our specification and the other specifications we've tested for, the ball would then be approved. If it fails any of them, then the ball is not approved.